Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This is episode 304. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio, like always, is my nemesis, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, hoarding toilet paper like mm. usual. Yeah, so we already we're already starting as, off. I don't as evil people do. Uh. Fantastic. Well, um, I'm just, let's just jump right into what made us happy this week because I have <laughs> nothing. I have nothing to say to you. All right. Uh, what made me happy this week was I finally, you know, I've been catching up on a ton of TV series uh, lately for yep. no apparent reason, just, just doing it one. and. Uh, Finally, I binge watched The Mandalorian, oh, okay. the, the Disney better. Plus. You know, the reason to get Disney Plus, in my opinion. But uh, good show, enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah, just a lot of overall, uh, you're like, yeah, I liked that. That was good. Quality, yeah, quality work. Um, especially going from like the CW DC stuff to like what Disney can do when they put a budget behind things. You're like, wow. Yeah. So that that's what CGI looks like. That's Disney's what you know. Disney's got that money. Yeah. It's pretty good. And it's funny because it's Star Wars, so like really hardcore Star Wars fans don't even care to see CGI. They would, no. would want to yeah. see everything like made too. But it's like, wow, the CGI looks as good as in the movie. <laughs> it's like a lot of it. It's like, oh wow, cool. Right. Yeah. No, and there is a, there is like a lot of like uh, puppets and prosthetics, is, uh, whatever the other thing is. Yeah. But um, Carl Weathers. I mean. Any show with yeah. Carl Weathers, I'm like, this is great. Yeah, a ton of cool cameos. Bill Burr's in it. Yeah. Um, Mignon Wentz in it. Like, there's a bunch of really cool uh, celebrities and stuff in there. Um, what made me happy this week was I completed Doom Eternal. Took me uh, about a week to beat. It's a pretty good game. I quite enjoyed it. And then uh, once you beat it, you got uh, unlocked in his, like, base like your main HUD of the game, uh, there's a computer, like an old school computer, and you unlock it when you beat the game, and you can play the original Doom on it. So I'm playing uh, Doom Eternal, uh, but I'm also playing the original Doom inside of that game, which is pretty cool. And then if you put in a code, you can play Doom 2 in there as well. So it's pretty fun. So I've been doing that and wasting my time because uh, I'm done with Doom Eternal play, playing just normal Doom. So yeah, really enjoyed it. Uh, also took a break from playing video games sometime during this week and uh, made uh, the classic uh, Doom guy helmet uh, at EVA Foam. So gonna cosplay him whenever conventions start existing again. So whenever that happens, we'll have a finished uh, Doom guy cosplay. <clears throat> Shameless plug: If you want to follow any of my cosplay, check out Patriot Props on Facebook or Instagram. And yeah, so that, that's what's been uh, that's what's been making me happy this week: cosplay and uh, playing Doom. Nice. And that's it. Uh, so does the raccoon still pop up after you unlock his base? Or does he still charge you rent? I hate you so much. I hate everything about what you just said. That's a, I was just, I'm just trying to take interest in your yeah, interests. Yeah, in, into my interests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's die. Fall off your horse. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> For those that get it, uh, they get it, but that's... Uh, an Animal Crossing. There's a whole thing, and I hate Animal Crossing so much. Uh, moving on, let's go ahead and jump into the news, or lack thereof, section this week. Everything is canceled, or, to put it in polite terms, uh, rescheduled. Uh, we have a couple articles here from WizKids. I'm just going to tell them really quickly. Uh, at this time, due to everything going on in the world, um, they are canceling their Q2 and Q3 public events. What are those? That is a cancellation for Origins Game Fair and the UK Games Expo, which means uh, Nationals is just not happening this year. Or at least it's not happening at Origins. We don't know. Um but, yeah, it's normally at Origins every single year. They are not showing up to Origins. Origins 
Uh, I don't think Origins themselves has canceled yet. I think they are crazy paying attention to it and hoping it gets better by June. But I think WizKids understands how much uh, organization it takes for them to get that event ran, like to run and properly and smoothly, like how they you know try to do nationals every year. And I think they were just like phoning it in, like you know what, nah, dude, let's just not, and they just canceled. So. Yeah, that's the first cancellation. Uh, Simeon, what do you have to say about that? Um, pretty pretty bummed. Uh, did hope to go to Origins. It'll still happen in some form. Yeah. Uh, whether, I mean, not necessarily Origins will happen, but like the stuff that like we would have gone for the like the news, the previews, uh, the Scott, the squ- the Scott preview block, fan appreciation Such stuff will still man. appear. Such a good man. Yeah, Love it'll it'll still appear somewhere yeah. somehow. I know, like, so not too bummed from that aspect. Um, but Team Sealed is one of my favorite ways to play the game. Yeah, and it's just not something you can really do outside of like the larger venue kind of things like that. Yep. Uh, I love Team Sealed. I mean, I just I totally agree with you. I love Origins. I love walking past everything and then sitting down and playing Hero Clicks against people I see all the time, or really only get to see at Origins <laughs> or Worlds. Like I really shouldn't say all the time. It feels like all the time because we get to see him at those big events and we hear about him from Facebook, always talking or whatever. Um, but no, we really only get to see those people at like Origins Worlds, whatever the Rock does. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Rocktober, not Rocktober, whatever they want to call it. So yeah, like. You know, and it's a bummer that's not going to happen. And I also, um, you know, I kind of hate parking at that center. Like, that does kind of suck. Um, but I really like, there's a, a Dirty Frank's hot dog. Uh, like, uh, man, I do love those hot dogs. Those are so good. Me and Chris went there two years in a row, and it was, it was awesome. Uh, next up for a WizKids announcement, we have organized play events. This sure is fun. They are all on hold until June. So that includes stuff like the monthly OP kits, the Justice League Unlimited release day OP kit, and Justice League Unlimited pre-releases. So normally we would like do an episode talking about our sealed picks and choices, but uh, pre-release sealed and really, I don't know, sealed in general isn't going to be happening for a while at Justice League pre-release. My shop... Um, isn't having Heroclix events anymore. Uh, Simeon, you told me like all three of your shops aren't having like Heroclix events at all. So yeah, um, there's no there's no seal to be had. You can still talk to your shop owners if they got the product in. Uh, see if you can buy it. Make sure you know you leave some for everybody. You know you don't have to, yeah. you don't have to buy everything. Two of my <laughs> venues in town did a limit of two boosters per person. That's pretty cool. Which I thought I thought was fair. And it's not like, you know, hey, it's not like you're going to be playing with them anytime soon. That's true. One, they're not legal. And two, uh, most venues are just straight up closed. So um, there's there's no origins or nationals. So it's not like you need prep for those. Yep. So really the only reason to get boosters right now would be to sell or because you just like have that itch really bad. Yeah. Um, so. That brings us perfectly to our last one. Justice League um, isn't released yet, right? It was going to be released next week, but even then, here is WizKids' uh, release date changes. For everything that was going to be released in April, Justice League's official release date is getting changed. They don't know to when, so two weeks from now, or three weeks from now, whatever, pre-release, you know how that is, um, it's still not going to be legal. It's still only going to be legal after its official release date, whenever that is. So this is going to be like pre-release product that isn't going to be legal for maybe a month or two to, to, to longer. It's right. wild. Um, along this with is... Justice League. Oh, sorry, go for it. Uh, this is just something that like it goes beyond WizKids because yes. Diamond slash Alliance closed their, uh, their warehouse. Warehouse, warehouses and they're not fulfilling any orders right yeah, now. Yeah, so it's, really rough. Um, it's along, hard to do a release when no one can get no your one product. No one can get so. the product, <laughs> yeah. So uh, along with Justice League, that includes their release day OP kit, the starter set, the booster bricks, the cases, the Dyson token pack. Uh, also, um, the Marvel Hero Clicks Fantastic Four Cosmic Clash is once again getting pushed back. Ladies and gentlemen, you know... <laughs> that that January release it was supposed to have is now no longer going to happen in April. Uh, What's well, going to happen in February? Not February, not March. Yeah, yeah, so that's great. And then uh, Heroclix Deep Cuts Wave 2, which we've seen all the dials for, is also getting pushed back. Fun stuff. So lots of cancellations, lots of stuff like that. That's enough for WizKids cancellations. Let's talk about Rock cancellations. 
Um, they have all said um, they're going to push all of their events uh, to June as well. So States was going to be happening here in about two weeks. So it's going to be in this April 11th to like 18th, something like that, kind of in that area. You know, that kind of two week period. That's when all the States kits were supposed to be there. Um, yeah, they're just not going to happen. They're not going to be scheduled. Uh, they're doing some online winter maps, though. So if you have a rock itch, there's they're doing some online winter maps and qualifiers. They have a Discord for that. They run it just like how we run ran our Captain America tournament that used Discord in Roll20. And you can play in online events like that. And the rock will ship out to you. Uh, whatever place you get, whatever or whatever prizing you earn, which is really cool. So uh, it's like ten bucks for a winter map entry. So if you want to do winter maps online, they're doing a ton of those. But as of right now, uh, states is not happening until June. So yeah, that and is, anyone can host yeah. those. So it's like, also you know, even if your your local venues shut down, if you've got like, you know, just a couple of local guys that are willing to play on Roll Twenty or even willing to like show up at someone's house or something and play you can still do like a win a map in that way and you just have to report your like you have to report like everything to the ROC as usual uh, yeah. they've got the rules on there but uh, also I wanted to go ahead and shout out so that's enough of the the gloom and doom uh, cancellations sadness and blah 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 um, but I, I think we should all take this time uh, number one learn to play online. Number two, if you have any friends, have them over and play with them. Uh, number three, don't worry about getting these new Justice League figures at all. Like, this is, like, my best thing to do. Even if you were excited for this set. Now, I don't know if I could say the same if, like, this was the Captain America set, right? I might be going a little crazy if this would have happened during Captain America. But because it happened to a set that I maybe care about three figures in, I'm just like... It doesn't matter. It does not affect me whatsoever. I can wait for those three, four figures, but play with all the figures you haven't played with. I know you guys be buying crazy amounts of hero clicks. Like, I still have a ton of WWE figures I've never put on the board. Like, I bought all my favorite wrestlers and, like, some other ones. And I'm like, I haven't played half of these. So please, by all means, everybody, go out and play. Even if you can I know you can't go out, whatever. Uh, but play table against yourself, whatever, you know, with your friends, family, like play, play hero clicks figures you haven't played before. Oh my gosh, please. Like, don't worry about getting all this new hotness. Play stuff you haven't played before. Yeah. That's, that's, I, uh, that's what I got. I played my first, uh, WWE universe game, uh, today on roll 20 with one mm. of like my local guys. So we both got on roll 20. I was kind of showing them how to do roll 20 stuff, nice. but yeah, did a, an actual WWE versus WWE. WWE versus so WWE. there was no, there was no grand entrance. There was no protected from range. Um, cause none of them have range. That so, was, uh, <laughs> yeah, no protected from outwit, right? Because they're carried yeah. outwit that start. So yeah, yeah, it, it works. It's kind of weird. Um, actually how WWE on WWE rules like work. And that was like something I had to find out when we did the ROC one at Rocktober. That was the first time I played with WWE Hero Hero Clicks, and it was all against other WWE, and it was actually like kind of weird, but kind of fun. It was it was pretty good. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, next up in news, we're gonna shout out a video that came out this week. Uh, Happy little Hero Clicks did his Fantastic Four starter review. Uh, recently, uh, he made a public calling out Twitter, calling them cowards. Uh, called you know Hero Clicks whiz kids, called them cowards, which is you know true. Uh, <laughs> and then they sent him previews like, hey, you know he he spoke his truth, man, and he got. He done got it. So they sent him a brick, a starter of Justice League. They sent him a Fantastic Four starter. And he and me and Simeon both uh, helped out with fun little um, kind of skit segment things in that video. So go check it out if you want to see us in it and also see a really cool starter. So, yeah. Just, yeah, just he did a, shout out he did a good that. job breaking it down, too. It was, yeah. It was good. Next up, another unboxing uh, that happened this last week. Uh, one, I... <laughs> I can't possibly tell you uh, how in awe I am of this. Um, WizKids sent uh, a full set of WWE Hero Clicks, or should I call them Macro Maniacs wrestling figures. Don't know where they got that name from, but that is the yeah. title of this video. 
Um, and they got the the Ring playset unboxing, and it is by none other than famous YouTuber uh, Puppet Steve dash Minecraft comma FNAF and toy unboxings with a with a check mark by their name. With a check, oh my god! Verified. Verified, verified. Uh, 661,000 subscribers. Um, the only thing in the description is WWE Hero Clicks, all caps, Micromaniacs, Wrestling Figures, and Ring Set Place and Unboxing, which is just the name of the video. Uh, and then a link to Puppet Steve's Legos at Etsy Shop slash Puppet Steve. So Puppet Steve, um, <laughs> just, <laughs> I can't. Not without, I, I you know. Not without, uh, you know, a little bit of controversy, because uh, I did read one comment said, I thought this was a family-friendly show. Why did right. Shawn Michaels' music say Sexy Boy? And I agree with that. If it's, it's a fram- family-friendly family friendly show, family friendly. words like sexy should not be just thrown around not like that. Not my family-friendly uh, household. No, sir. No, that's it's too far for my children. That's I'm... what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a grown man who has a, a creeper Puppets. puppet and a yep. Steve puppet. Now, when and you then, say creeper, I mean let's specify. Uh, the green uh, walking TNT thing in Minecraft. He's like this green cactus thing that blows up when he gets close to you. Excuse me, sorry, creeper. You're right. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like a is... puppet of me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Um, no, it's not a puppet of Simeon. Uh, <laughs> And he takes them, and they the puppets kind of do a little thing, and then he wears these felt gloves or something. So it's like he as if is, he his hands are puppet hands. As, yes. this, as if his hands are puppet hands, and as if he is as if he is puppet Steve, and he opens these figures. It is quite funny to watch him try to open them uh, with the puppet hands. I won't lie, uh, that was pretty good. Um, and like how he like moves them around and tries to like rip them up, like that's neat. Um, but WizKids, why did you give this man product to unbox? Yeah. I just don't understand. He's clearly, this is not your demographic. Uh, you It says 14 plus on the side of all right. of the products. If we are like, to trust your own advisement, what WizKids, you say. which is 14 plus, 14 plus, this man's demographic is clearly, I mean, like, I, I stopped watching Sesame Street and, like, Barney and, like, puppet slash, you know, costume kind of, like, shows well before I was 14, like uh, at least 13 is when I stopped, I, I want to say. And so, yeah, they're, they're missing the mark on the demographic. Also, the product that they sent this uh, puppet slash appealer of young children was the WWE product. They didn't send him like you know some like Marvel stuff. If like, only they we could have had sent, like uh, a set that was based off of a children's cartoon that we could have oh, sent yeah. this guy. That would have been perfect. That would have been so good for this demographic. But, but would they have sent out a a cartoon related set to people? I don't know if like anyone would have gotten a brick of uh, I don't know maybe the new Justice League set like several people did. I wouldn't know of anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, let's scratch that that off the That's list. Ter- yeah, that was I shouldn't even say it. that was terrible logic. I'm sorry. But, but beyond that, I mean, uh, there's this would have like this is the same as sending like Trek, and then all these kids are like, ah, oh, yes, Lieutenant Commander Data, my <laughs> yeah. favorite. I'm five. I enjoy puppet YouTube shows, and Lieutenant Commander Data is a figure that I'm willing to go out and buy with my hard-earned money because I'm five. Yeah, it's it's just and not not knocking on the children. It's just like a no, weird combo but they, of choices. They don't know about half of the wrestlers. If even if they watch wrestling, right? Let's say like they they probably know John Cena. Maybe they watch it with their parents and they they watch like modern stuff, so they know like whatever Sasha Banks, um, Charlotte Flair, stuff like that. They're not gonna know a bunch of the older guys, you know, like Ric Flair, Stone Cold, Decane, Undertaker, like. Yeah, the and rocks even, from yeah, Moana, it's, so it's, maybe, you can yeah, play as Maui. Yeah, like I guess it's so bad, and like the rest of his content, like it doesn't reflect this. Like he doesn't do um, board games on his channel. He does like those random like mystery toy unboxings and like stuff like that. Like that's what he does, and it'd be different because like Heroclix is a mystery thing you can unbox, but WWE isn't. 
you know no. like that's yeah. their one <laughs> that's their one product you know exactly what you're getting yeah it's... and if there's one thing i know about youtube it's that people love watching packages being opened oh yeah it could be like a bark box that has treats they, for your dog. Yeah, they want to see that, be, that one in one thousand golden bark bone, whatever they put in the yeah. bone. You know, like I don't know, but like that's what people want to like watch to see. And uh, they had to remove the golden bark bones. There's too many pets choking on oh, them. Oh so. right, right, right. I'm yeah, sorry. it's insensitive. People Worth a lot though. Me now. Right, collectors. Yeah. I do love that uh, some of the figures were broken when he when he opened them. I mean, I just. Uh, I think he broke Kane accidentally. He did definitely break Kane. And there was definitely electrical tape holding his uh, flame to the turnbuckle that I noticed. So that was nice. But so, uh, <laughs> yeah, like so, like that was just just a super weird thing. The WizKid sending product uh, to people that doesn't seem to fit it at all. But maybe they have just a big enough following that people might get into it. I don't know. Their line of thinking is really shady here, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, but it gave me a good laugh about the ridiculousness of the situation. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anyways, sure. that's that's news this week. Everything's canceled uh, and unboxings. So fun stuff like that. In in these dire times, I decided it would be really cool for us to try out a brand new segment. Uh, no doubt, a lot of you know that HC Realms is a place where you can look at dials, but believe it or not, there's more than just dials. Under each dial, there's a thread for that character, and also people can start threads. Threads are things like preview threads, where people post a lot of the upcoming figures. There are threads talking about what teams they've played uh, over the years, what figures they liked that came out this year, stuff like that. There's pump it and dump it threads, where they judge a new set way too harshly and kind of dumbly um and then there are threads where people design and make their own dials in kind of the creative corner um and this is a segment that's going to cover all of that where we're going to take an in-depth a semi-in-depth look at threads on hc realms that i honestly uh can't believe exist um sometimes so it's it's just going to be a real good journey so anyways please welcome the first time on the on the show uh thread dead redemption Friend, I just wanted to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see let alone reason. Now, reason ain't never been one of my strong points, neither. But see, and I do just fine. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Um, now, me and Simi and both enjoy the property the thread is based off of, and if you don't, then I am sorry about that, but it's more than just the property. We're not going into specifics about like the characters themselves. We're mostly going into some of the wording and how some of these powers work. So it's still very much Heroclix related, not so much based on a specific property, just so you know. So don't turn your brain off just because it's about something you don't care about. Uh, it is an anime thread. It is by Jay Faskins. I believe is how he would say his name. Uh, join date was July 20, 2019. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going like, to go into like, all his uh, stuff, but that is the person who made the thread. Um, it is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure uh, set thread. So uh, let me just go ahead and read his like little banner headline here. This is a dream set if JoJo's uh, that he made. It's quite long. There are a lot of characters in the series. Sorry if I missed some characters. This is a remake of a previous thread, but in the right place. All edits will go here. Uh, comment on any adjustment, adjustments or suggestions I should make. So me and Simeon are here to give him uh, some suggestions about how some of the dials work and a little bit about the combat values in this thread. It is, he has the set list named out, it is an 81 character set. So, sure. You know, I can deal with that. I'm going to read um, the chases section. This is the section that makes probably the most sense. Um, but really quick, the comments basically break down for characters mostly from part one to part two with a few uh, lower tier characters that are just overall weaker that are in other parts. So that makes sense for a common breakdown. Uh, uncommons, we get some more named characters, characters that we personally care about, characters that aren't really side characters at all. Uh, and then a bunch of side characters also mixed in, but more important side characters, not so much like, oh yeah, that person is also part of the group, I guess. Uh, instead, it's like some more named characters, um, stuff like uh, Hot Pants, Leon Abaccio, um, Lisa Lisa, Caesar Zappelli, stuff like that, like characters that were fairly important to the plot at one point or another. Enya, the hag. Uh, no, uh, I guess she was. I guess she was. No, she was. She For was that important. one, I mean, two episodes. Yeah, for, Maybe the, three. for the two episodes they fought her, but like she was sort of important, not really. Uh, the rares, I really actually like his breakdown of the rares. This is where he has most of the named characters. Um, so like 
Dio, but it's part one Dio. Um, he has almost all the Joe stars. So Josuke, Giorno, uh, Joseph Joe Star, Jodo, the two versions of Jodo Kujo. He has primes of every version, and I like the way he does his primes. He has uh, normal Jodoro, and then he has Jodoro when he realizes he can stop time. Uh, what is the uncommon prime here? Okay, it's Koichi Hirose and then Koichi Hirose when he gets uh, different parts of his stance. So that's a character that levels up who is can be used in sculpt reuse. Like, I do like the way he did his primes. Um, uh, prime for the commons are Shaka and Khan. Uh, those were two characters that kind of switch off, look the same. Um, I don't think they should be in the set, <clears throat> but they are. And then I really like his super rares. His super rares are probably characters that lend themselves to having big sculpts. Um, so characters like, let's see, uh, Johnny Joestar, Gyro Zapelli, Diego Brando. Those three characters all ride horses. Horses instantly make it a bigger sculpt, so that makes them like super rare, right? Uh, Rohan Kashibe can have a really big sculpt with like drawing his little manga thing. Uh, who else? Uh, Weather Report, he can have clouds, all sorts of stuff, and... Um, other super rares like Vanilla Ice, which were just really powerful characters. Uh, all caps Dio, who was. I'm the, sorry, uh, did you say Vanilla vampire. Ice? Vanilla Ice. Oh, excuse that's me. That's trademarked. Uh, that's uh, I, mean, I meant to say uh, Cool Ice. There uh, we go. Excuse me. <laughs> don't want to don't want to get copyright strike. Uh, and I really like his choice for chases. His chases are almost all the characters that mess with time. He has another all caps Dio, a Giorno Giovanna, a Diavolo, Funny Valentine, Enrico Pucci. Yoshikage Kira, Cars, and Ringo Roding, and Cars didn't really mess with time, actually. Um, but the Ultra Chase is Ultimate Cars, who I think is, like, perfect for an Ultra Chase. Um, and then he has Fast Forces, Connolly's, and an OPK character. The Fast Forces are the Stardust Crusaders, perfect for Fast Forces. Like, that's, like, literally a great Fast Forces. Connolly's are Whole Horse and Boingo, Jean-Pierre Polnareff, Joseph Joestar, and then Diego Brando, Alternate Universe. We don't really know... Um, Whole Horse and Boingo, that's specific. Like, we understand that one, but we don't know what he means by the other ones, so we don't know what alternate versions he means by those. Uh, and then the OP kit, he has Emporio Alnino. Now, I've been following this set for a while. It used to be Sandman, who was uh, a Native American character who entered a horse race with no horse. He was running the whole thing, which I thought he was a great character. I thought that's hilarious. I think that's an interesting thing at all. Like, But he changed the OP kit to Emporio. Now, I also... Really like Emporio. I think he's great. He's like 11 year old kid who lives in this prison because he can like live in the walls or whatever of it. And he's like, he wears like a baseball uniform. He's a hilarious character. Uh, he actually does really cool, powerful things later. All right. So that's like the character set list. If you didn't know half of these characters, you're like, okay, the set list makes no sense to me. But I did just want to, first off, compliment him on making a solid set list and having like the rarity breakdowns kind of makes <clears> sense. <throat> there are a few ones that stick out where it's like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, so Simi, why don't you go ahead and go into how he is designing traits and dials, which is kind of where this thread is going to need to be redeemed for sure. All right. So the first thing that like is quite obvious if you visit this thread is that you will notice like uh, if you've played modern hero clicks, like any hero clicks in the last three years, I want to say you will notice that the cost of these characters is crazy high for the dials that he's given them. Um, this would be high for stuff that was in like Avengers assembled. So um, we've got like 16 defenses all around a lot of 15 defenses. Sometimes they have combat reflexes or energy shield, but like it seems very rare that he gives anything a 17 and to go along with that cost. There's a lot of 16s with like a 75 point, 80 point cost so it's just like right off the bat it looks kind of like an older indie set mm -hmm. which like i don't know if that's what he was going for or if he just uh the dials didn't want feel it to very me. um Yu -Gi -Oh like in yes. the way the powers are and the stats being not yeah great. we've also got a lot of characters not not a lot i'm not gonna say a lot but we have several characters that start with something like charge blades Right, looking at number 003, Robert E.O. Speedwagon, Charge Blades, and also Ranged Combat Expert. So, I mean, yeah. It's just, like, not not the best combo of powers, which isn't, like, something that WizKids has never done. We have had those. We still have those, like, weird combos that don't really work, where yeah. it'll be, like, you know, like, Energy Shield and Stealth, and you're like, well... 
if they're shooting at me, I'm in stealth. Like, you know, I'd rather have combat reflexes. But so that's the biggest thing is uh, a lot of these figures just don't really match up with their point values from the get go. And sometimes the powers don't really combo well with what they're given. It's also uh, a disturbing lack of endom. Like, yeah, I don't know if he just didn't know how to code it or lots of lots of top dial 15 willpower, but very, very, very little endom. Yeah. So I'm going to go I'm going to go to like one of my one of my favorite kind of like uh, goofy characters from the series was the two brothers Oingo and Boingo. This is number zero one three in the set zero thirteen. They have agents of Dio keyword. Great, yeah, that Makes happens. Makes sense, sure. Uh, nine glory gods and assassin keyword. They come in at 75 points, zero range, no team power. They've got two traits, which is stand knum. knum. I, don't, I don't remember. These were like Egyptian god They're names. They Egyptian gods, yeah, I don't know what so they're I, there. Yeah, and the stand toth is the other stand name. So the first stand name is once per game, Oingo and Boingo share a keyword. A friendly character has. Which. <laughs> Once per game, Oingo and Boingo share a keyword a friendly character has. Is this once per game, like per turn? Or is this just like once per game, they share that keyword for the rest of the game? So, yeah, depending on what his line of thought was, it should be something like at the beginning of the game, choose a keyword a friendly character has. Oingo and Boingo have that keyword this game. Yeah. That's like probably the wording he was looking for. The that way that be. character actually uses that ability is to impersonate an opposing character. So I think it should probably take an opposing character's keyword, but Yeah. So okay. something that like would have made really good sense for this stand would have been a power called shape change. Yeah. Where <laughs> yeah. you change your shape and then your opponent can't really see you. Uh for someone like uh this character and like going off of like the the anime it probably would have been like a shape change that succeeds on like a three through six or like four right. through six because like his a, whole thing is that he just impersonates a character like he literally yeah. literally changes his face's shape to look like someone else wow. right so we'll go to the the next the next uh trait and then i'll get into the dial a little bit so the second trait is stan toth or toth i don't know it's toth uh, i think it's just toth once per game, you may generate a Boingo bystander adjacent to Oingo and Boingo. So they kind of split a little bit. Um, this bystander has a 5 speed stealth, 8 attack, a 9 defense. I'm sorry. A 9, 9, just uh, just a single 9 defense uh, with energy shield. Oh, it's and, got energy shield. Well, you know that's plus 2 to defense, right? So, I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It goes great with so, stealth. Like, so that's an 11. So if you have a like a 9 attack and you roll anything that's not a crit miss, you still hit. <laughs> um, and one damage with Empower. So this this by, bystander also has a trait. Uh, the God of Knowledge Toth. Probability control. Boingo may guess whether an attacker's roll is odd or even. If he's wrong, the attack continues. If he's right, the attacker must re-roll 1d6. So... It's prob on top of that, so it's like it's kind of a good little power. It's real weird. I don't know how he got his reasoning to this, when like the the power is more of like foreseeing stuff than changing. I don't know. Um, not gonna get like super into it. Uh, but this nine defense can be bumped up because on Oingo and Boingo's dial, they start with a nine speed charge, a ten attack. Not too bad. That's like, that's a solid kind of a little, you know, you can move five squares, 10 attack, 15 defense with defend. So if you spit out the Boingo bystander, then you've got a 15 defense, a 17 with energy shield. Ooh, look at that. Two damage with outwit. I do agree with outwit. I do think that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, The two damage hurts but I understand why uh, it can be bumped up to a three with the empower from the Boingo bystander. Uh, on click three, it goes down to a 14 defense 
and then by click six, it's a 13 defense, and it's defend the whole way down, and this is a 75-point piece. You're saying five clicks for 75 points and a 15 defense with no reducers? <laughs> also, yeah, like, you go up against anything that has, like, protected outwit. Like, there's several figures with protected outwit for 75 or less, and they can't outwit anything, and at best, they can do three damage. So it's just, oh, man, oh, man, it's rough. It is really rough. So that's that's kind of one figure. We kind of had uh, some some thoughts on how to make it better. I'm going to talk about uh, 053 Giorno Giovanna. No affiliation, no range. 70, uh, another 75-point figure. Has the Joestar group keyword, Bucciarati's gang keyword, Passione, and Joestar family. Uh, simple dial. You know, a good 15 with willpower, uh, 10 speed, stealth. No special combat symbols. He had a 3 damage within power. Uh, it starts with 11 in cap. Goes on to some charge, some support later. Um, yeah, 15 is his highest defense. It does go down to a 13 at one point, um, which is just great. Um, but this character has a trait. It's a very simple trait. Um, stand. Gold experience. Giorno Giovanna can make hindering and blocking terrain. Uh, period. Ah. Um, yeah, I mean, I know what he's trying to do. Uh, but there are traits that work for this. So, like, you say he can make hindering and blocking terrain. Okay, cool. So, you mean he has barrier and smoke cloud? Or do you mean that he can make them as, like, a free action? So, like, you want to put in keywords like... And he, he uses that. He says yeah. use a free action, like, in a ton of different characters. But for this character, for some reason, it's just can make hindering and blocking. So, a way to fix this, I would do, is something like... Uh, Jordan Giovanna, give Jordan Giovanna a free action. He can make two hindering terrain markers and then two blocking terrain markers or whatever this term like or he can use barrier and smoke cloud but only to generate uh one two one or two hindering and blocking terrain markers like something very simple like that like there are powers in the game that give you exactly what you want this character to do um and he uses and he gives those powers to other characters so i really don't know why he uh didn't like say that so much on this figure so like that's gonna, a simple fix i'm gonna mention a character to you here real quick okay um this is a character called Rose Red. She has the plants listen to me. Smoke Cloud, when Rose Red uses it, if she occupies printed hindering terrain, she may instead generate up to 12 hindering markers. When Rose Red uses poison, she can... Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, it's this one. Smoke Cloud, when Red Rose uses it, if she occupies printed hindering terrain, she may instead generate up to 12 hindering markers. When Rose Red uses poison, characters adjacent to three or more Smoke Cloud markers are considered adjacent to her. That's not the one I was looking at. No, Dang it. you were looking for Clariprast, right? Yeah, the, the, the non-rose red one. Yeah, the non-rose red one. Yeah, so she's the forty point. Yeah, you you found it. You found it. You yeah, it. it's it's a uh, free generate a hindering or blocking terrain marker within yeah. six squares in line of fire. If Clariprast is part of a Runaways theme team, generate both. See, or like if he's, if he's part of a That's Passion or a Butchardi's Gang theme team, like it would have been perfect for that. Yeah. Character. So, so that would have been open ended, like can make hindering and blocking terrain. It's like I just, I can just do this like at no cost. And, and there's just, kind of I a lot of continue uh, doing it. I can do it without range. Like stuff. there's yeah. no specifications on it. Yeah. All right. What's your next pick here? All right. The next one I wanted to go over. A uh, little namesake of the show was number zero one nine Joseph Joe Star. Right. Uh, real name Joseph Joe Star. No team affiliation. Zero range. Keywords are Joe Star Group, Joe Star Group, Joe Star Family, and Martial Artist. So this one actually comes in with some some little power behind it. So he's got the trait Ripple Overdrive, protected flurry. Once per game, when Joseph Joe Star hits with a light object, he he attacks with his printed damage value. So this is really weird. Wait, what? He, like, once per I game, use when he the hits light <laughs> with a light object, he hits with his printed damage value. So if you use a light object once per game, you just don't... You don't use the light object? Is that use the it's... light object? That seems what it's saying here. Um, also, he's just... It just says protected in all caps, and then the rest of this follows yeah. that. So I don't know, is he protected this? Like, Is, is he, he protected pro flurry, or does he have... Yeah. Flurry. Also, is, is he the trait protected, protected? Yeah. Once per game from taking, but it says when he attacks, 
with his printed damage value. So I, yeah, I, it's really hard for me to figure out. It would make sense if he was protected uh, from another character using a light object against him, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the protected flurry, or I don't know, maybe he's just protected everything, and that makes him good. Uh, second trait is the secret Joe Star technique. Once per game, Joseph Joe Star may use hypersonic speed as a free action. Uh, another really solid thing. Uh, but that's good. We've seen it on several characters before. Once per game, hypersonic speed. So I'm okay yeah. with that. That's that works. That works. Yeah. So his dial is he starts with a 10 attack, or sorry, he starts with speed. a 10 speed with charge, an 11 attack for his first two clicks with wake, and then he's got 16 defense with combat reflexes. He does have indom, and then he's got three damage his first three clicks with a special damage power that is the next thing you're going to say is, and this gives him shape change, probability control, and outwit. So this is like a, it's like a little trope that he did throughout the show where he would uh, stop like his enemy mid sentence and like say exactly what they were going to say. And then they wouldn't, they'd be like forced to say it anyhow because they didn't realize he was, you know, so cunning. Yeah. Um, so the outfit makes a lot of sense here. Uh, maybe even the prob control, because he's kind of like, you know, thinking like five steps ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, the shape change, I don't know if I'd give it to him, but maybe that's just like a little extra a little extra protection on him or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, mid-dial, on click four and five, he goes down to a 10 attack, 15 defense with willpower. Willpower on an indom character, you say? Why, well, yes, not. Uh, he's also got force blast. And those, those two clicks are both two damage without wit. He has a special attack power on those two clicks, and that is American Clackers. If Joseph Joestar moved this turn, he can use Quake as a free action. So he's got Quake basically the first five clicks, uh, but only as a free action if he moves on clicks four and five. On his last two clicks, he goes down to a 14 defense with Perplex and Regen on his uh, damage. Damage, he's got Perplex. Defense, he's got Regen. He has a special attack power that is, if Joseph Joestar... Oh, no. It's the... the speed star. power. Yeah, speed power. If a friendly character named Caesar Zeppeli is KO'd, modify all Joseph Joestar's levels by one. Increase levels by one. <laughs> Increase levels. So, like, we've seen traits like this, where he probably means combat values by plus one and i'd imagine he would end it with for the rest of the game because you can't just say modify all levels by plus one yeah. doesn't make any sense well you can't say yeah the whole thing doesn't make sense but yeah it's pretty bad justifying like you know he definitely means combat values by plus one like what else yeah. could he mean yeah um i would imagine that since it's like lower down in the dial and it's after caesar's KO'd, it's for the rest of the game uh this character comes in at 75 points. Uh, again, this is a it's a seven click long figure, so it's a little bit better than that first one I'm I was talking about. I'm not gonna lie here. Like besides some of the things that don't work, if he had a starting like first three clicks, if we would say there's 17 defense, then his last whatever were like 16 to 15 instead of 15 to 14. He's like my number one seal pick so far in this whole oh, yeah. set. <laughs> like he's actually like really good for 75 in like this set like sealed wise. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, there's a lot uh, to like about this figure. The free uh, hypersonic, the I mean he's got solid damage. Yeah, his his middle two clicks are real weird. I'd almost yeah. rather just be instantly on the uh, if a friendly character named Ze- K- Caesar Zeppeli is KO'd. Also, yeah. like, I'm imagining from reading this, if I was just to read it and I was to judge it, like, at a venue, I would say you have to be on this click when Caesar is KO'd. Because it doesn't check to right. see if Caesar not is trait. KO'd at all. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's rough. That's real rough. That means, like, not only does Caesar have to get KO'd, but Joseph Joestar has to be on his last two clicks before that. Um, so, but other than that, like, his top dial... If you gave him a plus one or two to defense, I could definitely see that being worth 75. Um, it's just his mid dial and his last two clicks that are kind of real rough. Yeah, it is rough. 
Um, kind of going off of a part two here, I'm going to talk about 061 uh, Wamu, real name Wham. Uh, this character is six range, two bolts, 80 points. Um, this guy, he likes to make a lot of people in like the 70 to 90 point range. He doesn't like going over 100 points for some reason. Uh, this Wamu figure, uh, the stats alone compared to a lot of other people... Um, in this set, make him at least a 120-something point figure. Uh, he starts with a 10-speed running shot, uh, 12 attack, penetrating psychic blast. So he auto-hits half of the character, more than half of the characters in this set with a 12 attack. As uh, long as it's not just, crit missing. Yeah, yeah, as long as he's not crit missing. He also has a 17 defense with super senses, uh, and then 3 damage with perplex. He doesn't have any indomitable. I feel this is one of the pillar men. I feel like all of the pillar men should have had... Uh, in Dom, and they all should have been 100 points, so you play them each, and you play all three of them at 300 points, or they should have all been, I don't know, uh, 125, so you can play all four of them, if you're doing the four versions of them, at a uh, 400 point game. Does that make sense? Like, that's what I think, it's, or obviously not 125 for 400 points, duh. They should all have been 100 points, play them at 400 points. Whatever, they should have all been 300, 100 points, is what I'm trying to say, goodness gracious. Um, he has a eight click long dial, which is sure good. Like he, he was alive for the, like one of the longer of them. So like, sure. They, they lived a long time. Uh, he has two traits. Um, first one is fine. Once per turn, he can use either energy explosion or pulse wave. So basically you mean free action, choose pulse wave or, or energy explosion is basically how that would be fixed to be worded. Um, and then he has a second trait, which is the wedding ring of death. At the beginning of the game, choose one opposing character. For the rest of the game, Wamu attacks that character with poison until they are KO'd, regardless of range and line of fire. Um, We're all for poison, Calder. Yeah. I, <laughs> so he gets to auto-KO someone with poison, regardless of range and line of fire, which is not how that worked in the show at all. Um, he also doesn't have a power granting him poison. You also don't attack with poison. You, it's not it's not an attack roll <laughs> that's that's made. It's it's super weird that when when he attacks that character with poison until they are KO'd. I, I don't like does that. I, do, so, I assume what he means is that character takes one damage each turn. Yes. Until they die. So yeah, this so in the show for those that don't know. Uh, Joseph Joestar, like, what does he... He makes, like, a pact, basically. He basically says, like, I'm gonna beat you guys in whatever. I'm gonna kill you. And he's like, oh, yeah, sure. And then he they... He puts, like, a timeline on it. He puts a timeline on it. It's like, if you can't kill us in 30 days, you die, basically. Yeah, we'll so they... the antidote once you beat us, but if you don't do it within 30 days, this poison I put in your body will just kill you. So, so it's yeah. a reference to that. So it makes sense... If you know the show like well, if you've watched like this like season and um, it just says for the rest of the game, Wamu attacks that character with poison. So I'm assuming like they're saying that like the damage comes from Wamu, uh, but also like it shouldn't start to be oh to be thematic with the show. It shouldn't start at the beginning of the game because this is basically like a reverse Martian Manhunter Choco Cookie kind of trait. Yeah. Where you're just taking constant damage each turn. And that's great. Also, it says until they are KO'd, which, like, you're not going to deal damage after they're KO'd. So. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't know. In Sealed, I think this guy, if the, we were just playing this set, this guy and uh, really all the Pillar Men are probably. They, they slay over. They just. They kill people. It's insane. Like, I get that, sure, they don't have willpower, but a lot of this set doesn't. But with the starting 12 attack, 10 running shot, 6 range double bolt with, like, perplex, that's just an insane, like, top dial. Like, uh, sorry, we're going to go into figures, guys, but, like, regardless of what we say, this set would be bonkers fun to play within itself because of how wacky everything is. Yeah. That is at least the very, like, the staunch, like, plus side to this set. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. It's bizarre, I could say. Had to get, but it's one of those in there. All right. So <laughs> this isn't a figure that I'm going to go over, but I do want you to scroll down to number 062, another Pillarman. Oh, yeah. ECDC. Do you notice anything about his dial that doesn't really combo well? Let me get there. Let me get there. I so the phone. his oh, okay. first three clicks have oh, running shot with oh, pulse boy. wave. And that's real good. He's got six yep. range, three lightning bolts. 
Calder, what about his first three clicks don't don't really think... work well with his running shot pulse wave? <laughs> the only problem with running shot pulse wave is that he also has Battle Fury. <laughs> for his first, first three clicks. Three clicks. <laughs> There's literally one click of running shot that you can use with this guy because it doesn't have Battle Fury. And that is that is the fourth click in where there is no longer pulse wave. It is now in cap, which triple target in cap still good. But man, yeah. 12 attack pulse wave top die would be fun if it was usable. Uh, and they've made characters with like poor pulse wave designs. I don't think they've ever given anyone battle fury with running shot pulse wave. I know they've given like that one Superman guy like charge with pulse wave. So you're like, theoretically you could charge and then like pulse wave next turn. So like you could still at least use that power he physically cannot use <laughs> running shot and pulse wave while yeah, he unless, has battle fury. Unless for some reason your opponent outwits his battle fury. Yeah. They're like, man, I really don't want you to like move adjacent and then hit through my soup, my, my shape change. I guess I don't know. It's also and then you're like, aha, uh, traded incapacitate. <laughs> and then also but on his dial. On his yes. dial, he gets it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. So moving on from that pillarman, uh, one of my favorite characters from the series, uh, Muhammad Avdal. So Ooh. he's got the the whole flame bird, magician's red. Uh, keywords are Joe Star Group, Stardust Crusaders, Speedwagon Foundation. So he starts with. So he's got a special speed power. It's yes, I am. Muhammad Avdal mm. can use stealth. Why is this a special speed power, Calder? I. It's just straight up a special speed power that gives him stealth. It's um, just stealth. You could have just gave him stealth. Just yeah. saying. I mean, stealth and running shot, maybe? I don't know. Also, one of my favorite things about this figure is he has zero printed range. He also has traded energy explosion oh, and poison. Yep. Mm. When he uses energy explosion, he may use barrier as a free action. The problem with this comes in the fact that he has zero range, so I can never use energy explosion. I have perplex, but thanks to the 2017 rules, I can't perplex my range up to like a plus one. And even yeah. if I was, that would be adjacency, and I wouldn't be able to running shot to adjacency. It's whew. Uh, so he's got he does have end on. He's yep. got his first two clicks are invulnerability. He's got one of the highest defenses in the set, and that's an 18 that goes to a 17. Wow. Two clicks of invincible at 17. And then he goes toughness with two clicks of 16, and then another click of 15. So this guy is seven clicks long. He has he has a some special... of the closest stats to what we would consider modern stats, probably. Oh, for sure. Out of, and once like, he all these people, once he gets a movement power that actually helps him, that's not uh, a stealth, I guess, helps him. Um, he has in cap his first four clicks, his last three clicks, he has precision strike and his last two clicks, he gets flurry. So his nine attack on his last three clicks with that precision strike, uh, he has one final special power and that is Mr. Joe star. I may have to get a little rough and that is outwit. When Muhammad Avdal is next to a character named Joseph Joe star, he modifies his damage plus one. So that's kind of cool. Uh, late dial outwit is always appreciated. He does get mid dial leadership for some reason um, to go along with his running shot for three clicks with zero range. Uh, 75 points for this guy. I would pay it. So if you gave him, maybe he, it was just an oversight and he meant to give so him like five him range. Like, yeah, four or five range, something like that. Um, so I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt, and I'm going to go ahead and say that he meant to give him 5 range. I would definitely play this figure with an 11 attack, 18 defense, 3 damage, and uh, let's say his stealth also had running shot. Yeah. So it was a special stealth running shot combo. That would make sense. Uh, I like traded poison. Uh, I don't like figures that have to like fall onto poison or start with poison, because I feel like I have to rush into using it. So... I do like that it's traded and that if someone decides to base me so I'm not running and shooting, that I can kind of poison them and I can even outwit them later in the dial. So that's fun. Yep. Uh, before we uh, jump on to my last pick, I do want to give a quick shout out uh, to Narancha. Uh, his ability is that he makes an airplane 
uh, his stand is Aerosmith, but I can't say Aerosmith, uh, so I'm going to say Little Bomber instead. Um, he makes uh, give him so it's at the beginning of the game you give him a power action to generate an Aerosmith by standard. So I don't. So basically, what he means is like once per game, give him a power action, or at the beginning of the game, make one. Like you can like at the beginning of the game isn't a time you can take actions, right? Like you can't take an action during the beginning of the game, but on your first turn, sure, I don't know, it's super weird. Um, but the airplane, like, what would you give like a little airplane that goes around and shoots shoots things? I would I would give it maybe sidestep or running shot with like energy explosion, you know? Uh, it has charge with incapacitate, which like that's not that's not a very uh, uh, the best airplane combo. Yeah, the best airplane. Like it doesn't. It doesn't the old comic people. It's yeah, it's so weird. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about another pog generator, uh, which is just bad, real bad. Um, 70 points, 11 range. I don't know why. Uh, we're talking about Middler here. Zero seventy one, so it's a super rare. Uh, Agents of Dio, Assassin keyword. We have six clicks life. Uh, nine speed, stealth, 11 attack with nothing, 15 defense, super senses, 2 damage, close combat expert. Uh, the stand, high priestess, once per turn, give Midler a power action and generate a high priestess bystander. So, for some reason, uh, Narancha's terrible airplane, which is a 7 speed, 10 attack, 14 defense with a 3 damage, right, um, is a once per game, at the beginning of the game, like, power action to generate. This one is a once per turn, it's power action. By the way, you can't take multiple power actions in a turn. I mean, like, it's it's just a power action. So this character can keep making uh, this pog. It's, it's just a power action. It doesn't say it's unique when it gets to the pog. So for some reason, they they thought it was okay to let you keep making this. And you're like, Calder, you're really blowing this out of proportion. No, this pog is ridiculous. Let me tell you why. It has an 8 range, running shot, 11 attack, 10 speed, 11 attack, uh, 16 defense, 3 damage. If I'm power action to making like something that outranges something each turn, like and can kill a ton of stuff in the set, it's really good. Now it has a running shot with blades, a 16 defense with impervious, and a three damage or shape change. Um, don't worry if you thought the pog was too good. It does have a trait that makes it almost useless. Um, it gives it uh, regeneration on a pog. Battle fury. Uh, yeah, gives it <laughs> I didn't battle even fury. See that at first. <laughs> yep. Uh... So. <laughs> It's got running shot with eight speed uh, with battle fury. Uh, so battle fury regeneration on the pog and, and outwit. Uh, what are you gonna of, regenerate? I does I don't know. I don't know. He he makes a pog it, that's also here that has like a fifteen attack with steel energy, but that one steel energy specifically heals the character that made it. So that one makes sense. I don't know why this one has regeneration. It's uh yeah. Unless it's like horde token style, I don't know. Yeah, it's it doesn't. It, but yeah, it doesn't someone work. that can. So for seventy points, you have someone that can make an eleven for three figure. That like, I mean, first of all, it can't use the eight range that it gets except yeah, for outfit. So it can't really use the shape change. Or, but no, can't, can't use running shot. Like yeah. Reduces by two with impervious. Also can roll out of damage if it's not penetrating, and shape change means that your opponent actually has to spend time trying to like get rid of these things if you pump out enough so this is actually yeah. like this is a top tier pog even with the weird power combo it's like a top tier kind of like bystander like i would definitely play this guy knowing full well that this is like a terrible combo of powers just yeah. as like tie up pieces absolutely absolutely uh did you have another pick or did we did we go through all of the, the most of the picks here i mean I could uh, go gonna... throughout this whole set. Like the yeah. one right below the one, like Midler, is Dio, uh, Mystics, and Quintessence. I don't know why he decided that he's a DC character, but um, for he does. 85 he gives people points, that he would give like Power Cosmic or whatever to, he gives them Quintessence. Quite a few people have Quintessence on this for whatever reason. For 85 points, 85 you get points. clicks. You get nine clicks. You get a starting lineup of 12 speed. So he's one of the few characters with flight. 12 speed hypersonic, 12 attack with flurry, blades, claws, fangs uh, on his attack power, an 18 defense with uh, when Dio is attacked by a character with Joestar or Joestar group keyword, his defense is modified by plus one. Doesn't reduce anything, but 
he gets a 19 for a lot of the characters in the set. Yeah, and three damage so. prob. And then he also has instead of one action, Dio can make two actions in a turn, but he takes two action tokens. So it's like he give Dio a double power action. He can yeah, do any two like, actions is what he means like to like say attack with a double power action kind of thing. So yeah. it's probably like he hasn't heard that wording before, but like that's probably the wording he means. But basically. on this character for 85 points. You can hypersonic 12 squares out, and then as your second like form of your action, flurry with a 12 for 3. So you can do 9 damage in one turn with this guy, which kills everything in the set. Like Other than like a few other characters that have like impervious and like some decent rollouts, this like one 85 point figure just destroys the whole set. Yeah. Which which is kind of fitting for who he is, but also that's not an eighty five point dial. Like regardless of how some things like don't work the way they should, it's not an eighty five point dial at all. Oh, it's um, definitely not eighty five points for this set. For this set, no. Uh, it's really weird that he has the Joe Star family keyword, but not any keyword that goes with his minions. Um, yeah. So he can't be played on a theme team with any no agents of Dio. Have, yeah. yeah. No agents of Dio keyword. Like, even TMNT people had TMNT ally, or uh, whatever. I'm like, so he probably should have made something like uh, TMNT, like, villain, a keyword. I mean, then, like, 90% of the people would have had this, but, like, still. It should be a keyword like that if he wasn't going to give it to Dio, which is just really weird. I understand why he has Joe Star Family, like, that actually makes sense, but it's weird that he doesn't have a keyword that works with his other characters. It's very odd. Yeah, and so right now the set ends with number 76. Um... And so he does have a little ways to go to finish it out. He's already on, like, the chases, but yep. he's got a few chases, the Ultra Chase, and then the OP Fast Forces and Connellys. Connellys. So I'm curious to where it goes. He last updated it 326, so three days ago. So, I mean, he's constantly adding to it, which I enjoy. Um, I, I honestly, like, I enjoy the show, and I enjoy kind of, like, how he's making the dials, but... Um, and on the off chance he's listening, like... Uh, we weren't trying to like go hard, like be like rude to you, but what we're saying is like there are like powers that exist that you're trying to describe for these characters. So like there's some like wording cleaned up, um, and I know like you're making a lot of characters. Like don't get me wrong, like a couple of mess ups is like fine when you make like this many oh, yeah. characters. But it's, it's a huge all, undertaking. It, it is a huge undertaking. Like I've only ever made like fast forces characters and OP kit characters before. I've never tried to make a whole set, but. You know, you you post a couple of figures a day. Instead, um, make, like, one character a day and just really try to nail them. I know, like, you're already so far into the set, and I actually, like, wish I would have seen this set sooner. But, like, for any, like, constructive criticism I could have is, like, slow down. Um, if a character has an ability, there are a lot of characters that have abilities you're probably trying to describe. Or characters that have abilities very... Uh, similar to these other characters uh, that you could probably copy that would make a lot more sense and help you with some of your wording and it would make the set look a lot cleaner um, for sure. But also the combat values thing. I don't know what, where the combat values thing is coming from, but that's probably one of the more egregious things besides some of the really rough wording. But the combat values are, are really, really bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's... When you're designing one of these like sets, so this is just like... And like we're we're riffing because uh, we just want to have like fun and just like yeah. point out some like funny stuff. So like I do appreciate like everyone who does this on HC Realms, and I do think that like it takes a lot of work, and mm -hmm. I appreciate like the fact that he's going in like so far depth. But if this is like your, it's it's a set that's like probably, in all honesty, never gonna get made. Um, just like have fun with it and look at like com like you know look at your common stuff that's out there in hero clicks right now and base it off of that there's no reason a 75 point figure needs to have a 16 defense unless you really think like they should be easy to hit yeah uh, like i can understand you know i can understand like a little side character having a 15 defense but uh if you're giving them 75 points it's just like you know Make them worth that 75 that. points. Um, a side character for Marvel, uh, Happy Hogan, has a 17 defense. Yeah, like for for like 20 points or whatever he is. Yeah, for 20 points, he's a 17 defense. So kind of like keep stuff like that in mind. 
Yeah. Absolutely. So that was Thread Dead Redemption. If you guys liked this segment, let us know. If there's any other threads you think that we should cover or talk about, or maybe you have a thread with some characters that you want us to talk about, uh, send it into the show. Uh, just let us know. We're just trying new stuff just because not a whole lot else we can do. So let's go ahead and move on into the community section. There are dozens of us! Dozens! Community Tuesday's questions, uh, just because of JL, JLU coming out, slash not coming out, uh, what other Marvel slash DC animated shows, Marvel or DC animated shows, uh, should WizKids make into a hero click set? Uh, the reason we said Marvel and DC is because those are the ones that have the highest chances of getting made, and also because, like, if I wanted to know what random cartoon, uh, we would have made that a separate Community Tuesday's question, probably. Like... We would have used that as a totally different question. But I get it. People are passionate about things. So I'm going to read like, let's do like three, uh, three each. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start. Uh, Vigilante Chance McCall says, I just want uh, a busted pointing Spider-Man figure. Other cool ideas could be, uh, he says also, when he says cool ideas, he says terrible ideas, which would be Rick and Morty, Naruto, or the best ever Animal Crossing, which are all bad. All bad. Nice. Simeon. <laughs> yep, nice. Over on Facebook, we have Chris Miller, who says, Transformers. So, like, WizKids did make some without dials. And he said, also, would like to, would love to see a return to Batman Brave and the Bold. I would like to see Clock King, Eraser, Babyface, Chemo, and Buona Beast. Buona Beast is, like... that's one of my biggest, like, wants for hero clicks. Because in, if you've never seen Brave and the Bold, it is such a good, uh, like, combo of, like, campy, fun cartoon and also, like, deep DC lore. They go into, like, all these, like, like all these, like, long storylines that DC did. They do in, like, an episode or two. And they do a really good job of kind of, like, actually sticking to the source material. So, Like, oddly well. I really enjoy uh, Aquaman's characterization in Brave and the Bold. Like, he's pretty hilarious. Brave and the Bold is just a great show. Also, the the Batman from Brave and the Bold voices the Batman in the new Harley DC cartoon. Oh, really? Yeah. I can't remember the the name of the dude, but he did, like, a really solid job doing Batman. He just has one of those voices, and he's always done Batman really well. And, yeah, he's back, back in the saddle. Right on. Uh, Jason Levine on Twitter says, The old Marvel cartoons where they just took comic book art and quote-unquote animated it. And he goes said, When Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who chose to oppose his shield must yield. So yeah, they did a Spider-Man and Captain America in this way, the ones I know of. And it was just like Jack Kirby, like art. That was It's kind of like how South Park is animated, how but like obviously much worse because it's like the 50s and 60s. Like where it's like clip art like that. It's pretty. Oh, funny. okay. Yeah. I was see. I was picturing, uh, they did like Iron Man Extremis like storyline, and they just take like actual comic scans, and like they'll just have the background like slowly moving, and they'll have like the character like, kind of move as well, and so it, they just make like an actual comic like more dynamic. With like the visual, oh, like, kind of like more of like a motion comic with voice acting sort of deal. Yeah, they do like voice yeah. acting, and yeah, like they'll do. It's it's like you can still very much tell that it's a comic, and there's no actual animation going on, but they do like move, like certain clips of like the comic panels. That's what I was thinking of. Okay, I do I do like those, but that's mostly because it's direct from actual like Marvel writers, so it's yeah. well done. All right, here on Facebook, we've got David Herberger, who says, DC Legion of Superheroes with a Super Pets sub-theme. I wonder if he means, like, the Super Pets TV show. I used to watch that. It was pretty funny. The, yeah. the crypto show with, like, all the other, with Ace the Bad Dog and, then, like, the other, like, totally made-up Super Pets. That was yeah, pretty there's, funny. There's a Super Cat, uh, the, the Wonder Woman kangaroo, and then a Green Lantern rabbit? It looks like I, I think so, yeah. But yeah, he he added with that, so it was great. On Twitter, we also have I like this. Oh no, wait, no, that's terrible. I'm sorry. Uh, Aaron goes on to say Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, 
Super Friends, Spider Man, his amazing friends. Uh, Spider Man is a phrase of friends had a team base, like so, which was the first. I think I want to say it's the first animated thing they sort of like made, which is based off an animated show, Spider Man's Amazing Friends team base. So that is made, my man. But a lot of people also said Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which I totally agree with. I really liked Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Thought it was a great show. If you haven't watched it yet, it's on Disney Plus. If you have it, uh, go watch it because it's awesome. The theme song is awesome. Very nice. Earth's Mightiest Heroes. What was it like? A day came unlike any other. Any or other. Something like that. Avengers, we will come. Like, it's so good. It's so good. Nice. You. All right. <laughs> Sorry. I was just... Assemble, we are one. All right, go for it. Oh, yeah. Assemble, okay. we are one. Something, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The Mighty Avenger. Yeah, it's, it's uh, good. Anyways, good. sorry. Citizen sorry. Peter Marshfield says, as much as I, as much as I'm not a fan of the lanterns, the Green Lantern cartoon would be cool to have, since it would feature all of the Lantern Corps again. Did you ever watch that one? Um, that was on the CGI, right? Animation uh, kind of style. Is that? I don't remember if it was CGI. Yeah, I think it was. Now that you say that, it was kind I of like. I think I might have seen like. Kind of like, yeah, like Clone Wars style. I think I might have watched, like, specifically the Guy Gardner episodes. But okay. I think that's probably about it that I've seen of it. Yeah, I, I watched, like, the first two seasons, and they had stuff with, like, the Red Lanterns, but I stopped watching it after that. I might have to look it up again to see if it's if it's worth watching all the way through. Sure might be. Sure might be. That's uh, three each, only because we had so many people uh, go ahead and write in. But we do love it when people write in. Um, a lot of people said non-Marvel DC stuff, fellas. If you're going to do that, at least say a cartoon. Some people were like the DC CW universe. I'm like, so not a cartoon. Uh, that's okay. But anyway, Also like, bad. Just also bad. Also bad. Yeah, really bad. I can't believe people watched that. I can't believe you watched it. Like, I, I get it. I shared a clip you of... You feel like there's nothing else to do, but man. I shared a clip of the season three finale with Calder for... Uh, legends of tomorrow and he sent me a picture of like he, he literally like vomited all over himself because Dude, of how bad it was oh, oh, i i wanted to gouge my eyes out when i saw that i'm like i this can't physically be what they're actually putting and to think they TV. made another season after that like yeah it's, they didn't get just completely scrapped like the wild. constantine constant tv show got scrapped after one season how legends of tomorrow did that i used to like legends of tomorrow i think i watched like the first two seasons like back to back and i was like dude i love this show this is like like i don't like any other dc stuff this is great this is just funny it's hilarious and like i stopped watching halfway through because it got so dumb and it it's good to know um and also terrifying to know that it literally only gets more dumb it's it's gotten (laughs) pretty bad um I still watch it for the crossovers, but man. Ooh, that's rough, buddy. That's rough. Uh, moving on, let's go ahead and go into Jedi Legends Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. Nice and simple. Hero Clicks of the Week. Stealth is off for Line of Fire, uh, our Line of Sight, on your turn. So if you need to buff or debuff, you can. Yeah. So stealth is specifically opposing lines of fire are blocked. So when it's your guy, don't worry about it. He lets he lets you know that you can see him. It's like Batman throwing up the thumbs up, like I'm hiding in this bush, but like you know I'm here, dog. You know I'm here. So it's that teamwork right there, baby. It's that teamwork. So yeah, this is the nice way. And simple. This is the way. Uh, okay. Is this what you're gonna, you're gonna quote something from something that's like five, four months old just because you're late to the punch, Simeon? I have spoken. Uh, hmm, there it is, <laughs> baby Yoda. I don't know. That's not uh, even a. Fr- you just said Baby Yoda. <laughs> At no point in the show do they call it that. No, they and call I'm a child. little disappointed. But did you think we were gonna call him the child? No, we call Baby Groot Baby Groot. We're calling him Baby Yoda. That's just the way it is. Uh, moving on, we're gonna go ahead. Malcolm Rush sent us in some questions. Let's do uh, Malcolm Rush question block. That's in Japan. Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. Definitely uh, cannot go to Japan. Um, new questions. Heroclix is a game of plastic figures, but WizKids has included cards over the years. Wiz, Simeon, did you know that Heroclix have cards? Did you know this? 
I was slightly aware that uh, hero clicks have cards. Yes. Okay. Just I mostly, you know, like if you were to look at my shelf and see all of the little, the little tiny miniature statuettes and some of the bigger statuettes, you would not know that cards are a thing You'd because they are hidden. Know. But off in a box somewhere. Yes. Rotten that is very true. <laughs> uh, so he's asked questions about bystander tokens and objects. Uh, so please do not include them to your in your answers. So no no object or bystander cards. All right. Don't worry about it. I got you, Malcolm. We got you. For people that don't know, past cards in Hero Clicks, here's a quick list. If you forgot any, please add on. There are feat cards, battlefield condition cards, additional team ability cards, ATA cards, uh, normal character cards, character cards that have dials, ID cards, and very soon, team up cards. And as we know, there's the uh, the Regenesis uh, special cards, which are like a predecessor to team up cards. Uh, there's some other cards in there, and I think we're gonna we're gonna throw some pretty cool curveballs with these answers. So we have best, worst, and favorite card in Hero Clicks, past and present. This, this is uh, it's a little weird. It's a little weird trying to like gauge normal character cards and like what makes a card good, right? Because like a card just gives me the information I need to know. There's not really anything too special about a card besides what it tells me a figure or a thing can do. Yeah. Right. Um. So most of the time, yeah. When you think like when I think of a card, I think like of the figure because the card is like secondary to the figure. So the only time I will think of the card first would be if it was like some sort of like an ATA, a battlefield condition, or an ID card, something that actually adds to my team on its own. Right. I can do it. Yeah. That. All right. So best versus favorite, Simi. You want to start us off? So for best. I went ahead and said the serpent from uh, the Fear Itself uh, organized play kit, the the big old boy, the the giant snake monster. He has one of those fold out cards. He's got multiple dials, so multiple rules for his dials. He's one of those like boss battle kind of figures you can use, or one of the things you can play against for like if you're just doing a ridiculously high point game. And so I like his his giant green card with like all the the neat little stuff on it. That's the best. Awesome. I would say the best is I really enjoy the Gravity Feed set Deadpool where uh, all of his named powers are him kind of complaining about the powers he has. Uh, his trait is, I liked my trait in Web of Spider-Man better. His uh, sides that he's got, like, pink looks good on me. His face and teleport's like, oh, double digits. Uh, his charge is remember to round up. Stuff like that. Um, combat reflexes. Oh, the designer thinks I'm graceful. Like, uh, his toughness is just once I'd like invulnerability. Like, it's it's really funny. I, I enjoy uh, this fourth wall breaking, like, Deadpool, like, looking at the game as if he was a player. Like, I, I think it's pretty sweet. I, I This is probably, in my opinion, like, the best. I enjoy it a lot. That's pretty sweet. Um, yeah. So for worst, I went ahead and said all of Regenesis. Ooh. I I Why do not you like, like Regenesis, Simeon. I just don't like how uh, all the like flippy floppy cards go in a set box because I have all my I have all my stuff split between yeah. sets, and then each like deck of cards in order in a like smaller box inside that box, and uh, Regenesis cards are hard to do that with because. They're all thicker on one side, so they stack funny. They're hard to f like fold in and out too. Like when you want to use one side, it's yeah, super I annoying. Legitimately cut most of them in half because I was like, if I'm ever gonna play like the one version, I'm gonna know that ahead of time, so I'll just bring that version. I won't need yeah. to fold it. Which is, I mean, also the fact that their alternate trait for like the alternate card could have very well just fit on the first card. It would not have been for like most of them. Yeah. It would not have been a big enough difference. This color coordination thing. They felt the need to do yeah. with also like <laughs> changing it. Uh, uh, for worst, I put uh, the ATA red sun suns. Uh, I feel stupid to say. Um, and it's, it's like a bad ATA. Let me like read it for you here really quick. Um, this character using team ability can their defense power countered. Uh, if they are outdoors and do not occupy the lowest elevation of terrain. Sweet. Uncopyable. What, a, what an oddly specific solid. way to give uh, um, protected uh, like defense powers. 
Yeah, not even protected at width, just protected defense. They're, they they are outdoors and do not occupy the lowest elevated elevation of terrain. Like what a what a stupid card to have. All right, Simi, go uh, give us your favorite. Here we go, big favorite. All right, my favorite is the Department H ATA, and this is Ooh. just for the simple fact that it works with uh, Alpha Flight. So if mm. you're running Alpha Flight and you throw this ATA on. Uh, let's see this ATA was three points per character that had the alpha flight keyword and when a character uses this using this team ability is KO'd roll a d6 for each friendly character that can use this team ability if the result is one through four heal this character one click on a five six heal him two clicks so not like huge but it like helps in the few times that like I ran a uh alpha flight team with this ata i just threw it on to help round the team off to like a decent amount of points because they had like some weird point values in there right on uh my favorite card is a card that came with orphan from deadpool and the x-force and it is a uncle sam poster so all the ecstatics in Deadpool and the X Force came with an extra card that was normally like a tabloid or t- tabloid, a tabloid or a newspaper like magazine style like card. So it was it was basically because they had headline tokens. I don't know if this was like supposed to be their headline token or whatever. They all only came with one, but like one character could get multiple headline tokens. Anyways, uh, but instead of having like a headline token, so they had front and backs for each one. Um, and on the back of Orphans, it's an Uncle Sam poster, and it's I want you to play Hero Clicks, which I have a deck box that has a window, and it's you're supposed to like put your favorite card in there, and this is definitely my all-time favorite card. So I have it proudly displayed in my deck box window uh, for my Captain America. All of my Captain America collections are in this one box, and I just really dig it. I like I like the the old school Uncle Sam poster. I want you to play Hero Clicks. I think it was really cool. I definitely don't have that orphan anymore. He's he's somewhere. I don't, I don't care who orphan is. Um. So yeah, <laughs> but I just I love that card. Like that actually is like my favorite card. He uh, was moving on. He was sweaty. I don't remember what his thing was, but I he think, was sweaty. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Uh, he like so... fought Iron Man when they were both drunk for something. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. because. Yeah. I don't, no, I've He no has idea. like don't. a power that makes him like really sensitive to stuff. I don't know. Stuff, yeah. Uh yeah, it makes him a teenager. Uh number one number two, he best worst and favorite looking cards. So what are the best looking cards you think, think Simeon? I'm gonna say one of the best looking cards is the shield level seven card. Because mm-hmm. it's like it looks like a legitimate kind of uh clearance like card like you know you'd like show it be like oh like i'm shield level seven and so like most of the id cards were kind of lame they just had like a picture of the person yeah Uh, but the shield level seven was like oh special card you know like i absolutely i never liked seeing it because i never had one so it was always being used against me (laughs) you didn't like seeing it because it was always used for the same person yeah Uh, (laughs) yeah no there's options there was you know hawkeye nick fury the other one it was no i'm pretty sure it was just hawkeye and nick fury and even then they mostly <laughs> just used hawkeye for, for or mostly just used nick fury for it and they used hawkeye for hawkeye's card yeah fun fun stuff i guess you use ronan's card too anyways uh we had similar answers uh my best is all of the avengers cards because that is how the avengers id works and as a cosplayer, it's really cool to be like, I am Captain America and like show them your Avengers ID. I thought for like a real world like card, it's not like not like everybody could be a shield level one or shield level seven agent. Like, sure, like you don't know. Um, but like it felt really cool. And like it's a card I have in my wallet. You'll find like my favorites are like the best ones or ones I proudly display some more. So like I have Captain America's like Avengers ID card in my wallet. I think it's really cool. It's really fun. All right. Worst. Simeon, worst looking one. The worst looking card is Oliver Genesis. Mm. Again. Odd you would say that. It's it just I mean, it doesn't look like anything special. So it's just yeah. like a plain card. But again, it's like bubbled up on the one side because of the fold. And so uh It's pretty bad. Also they came in gravity feed packs, so they were all bent in some mm. way. Um yeah. The uh, my worst 
ones or like worst looking cards. I think all modern cards look bad. I, I honestly, maybe it's because I just like the way the old cards looked. Um, they, I think they could have changed the way old cards worked without having to make them this terrible. Uh, let me just grab one here because I hate them so much. Um, so now instead there are little towers of writing, right? Like instead of having it go all the way across, which was easier to read, the picture of the character is, for some reason, they decided to have them in the way of all the powers. Like, I don't know why they felt the need to move the picture and ring of the character. They could have done that with an old card, kept it there, and still, instead of having the rev, which used to be there, or the unique thing, they could have literally kept the character there and then put the colored background, instead of being a rev background, their rarity background, and then they also could have put their stupid... Um, improve movement and targeting under that character. So the character doesn't need to be a big dumb ring off to the side, which I think ruins. I, I really hate modern cards. Um, and then it makes all of the the text pillars, and then it makes half of these cards lose room for the uh, the powers. So now a, a ton of these cards are flip cards, which I hate. I, I hate how big these cards are and how much space they take up. Um, they also put the sculpt on the card. Um, so the sculpt is already on the front. Uh, I already have the figure. I also don't need a digital render of the sculpt in the card. Like, I don't need that. The dial on the back is fine. I, I was I didn't even care about the dial on the back when people first, like, saw the card. Uh, when they, oh, sorry. When they first saw the dial was on the front, that was bad. Now it doesn't matter, I guess. Um, like, I didn't even mind the dial on the back. It sucks. Here's another terrible thing about modern cards. The point value is on the back. That's information you and your opponent should know. Uh, the team ability is also on the back, and I get that this is displayed on the character dial, but seriously, like, I, I really hate the way modern cards look. I, I think it's terrible. Uh, for a while, there was a card editor, and I made um, custom cards for all my Captain Americas that were the old-school card look for modern ones. So uh, the Earth X, LE, um, and a few like the first Captain Americas that were made. But like after a while, I'm like, oh, i just stop doing it. It's too much work to make custom cards that don't look like garbage that I want to play. I, I seriously hate the way modern cards look. All right. Favorite-looking card, Simeon. So my favorite-looking card is just an example here. Uh, this is for the the Spider-Man from Web of Spider-Man, number 022. This is the black suit Spidey in the corner of the two walls with, like, the web, and he's up in, like, he's up in the web, if you know what I'm talking about. So the reason I like this card is because on the back it has real name, Peter Parker. This is stuff that's on the back, so you don't need to you don't need to see it on the front. Uh, first appearance, Amazing Spider-Man number five three nine two thousand seven. So this is a specific Peter Parker. This is spe specific Spider-Man. Background. This is something we don't see anymore. Background. Things go from bad to worse for Peter Parker after the superhero civil war. Aunt May takes an assassin's bullet meant for Peter, who surrendered his secret identity on public television and now regrets it. With the woman who raised him like a mother dying in a hospital, Spider-Man takes on his darkest task to date. And that's that's my favorite, uh, just the whole background. Like, they give not, so, like, we've got a hundred Spider-Mans, right? Right, yeah, But yeah. this is a specific one, and it gives you, let's say you didn't read that storyline, it gives you the entire lead-up and, like, his motivations and, like, where he's at as a character in this little like synopsis on the back so that you know why this spider-man maybe you know is angry and has like flurry or why he's you know got willpower when he normally would have super senses exploit weakness instead of like outwit all that kind of stuff that is cool i liked that story recap they gave a lot of characters i get it it was probably a lot of work for them to do but that was awesome i did i, I really did love that my favorite looking cards are the cards from War of Light. Uh, if you didn't play in War of Light, you might not know this or have any figures in it, but it was mostly lanterns. I, I can't imagine there's any figure that wasn't not a lantern. But anyways, um, they all had their lantern symbol 
uh, faintly in kind of the background. So like all the text and stuff was over it, but on the card you could still make up that there was a, a lantern symbol there. It was really cool. So it lets you know this character's a green lantern, this character's a blue lantern, like even more so than just looking at what the color of their suit was, like the lantern symbol being on the card looked just really cool on the front and back of the card. I really liked that they did that with War of Light, and that's why it is uh, my favorite looking card. And that was again not the like little circle in the corner kind of style. That was the like yeah. banner over the head. Yeah, it was like a total banner like throughout like the entire. It was like basically it was the background for the whole card. It was awesome. It was really cool. Uh, number three. Uh, we're, sorry guys, we're doing these. It's kind of long winded. Number three. ID cards are going to be retired very soon. Which of the past cards are retired that you want Whiskits to bring back? Also, what change should Whiskits do to make it better? Simeon, you go ahead and answer this. I'd like them to bring back um, none of the ID cards. I think all of them can just stay gone. That'd be perfectly fine with me if I never had to use or see one again. Um, I didn't necessarily not like the mechanic. I just didn't like the way that it was used. And that just it just seemed like uh, the whole call in for help is what they named it on the card. If they had named it like call in an attack, that would have made more sense. But the call in for help thing just didn't make any sense to me. Um, if they were going to redo them, what they should change is they I think they should make them similar to like Super Friends or Retaliation, where it's like if you crit missed, missed three times, or if you took a damage from an opposing character, you can call in somebody and they can target that opposing character or they can do whatever their ID card thing says they can do. But just make it a little bit harder so it's not like my main way of attacking you is these sideline figures that you can't ever attack. Yeah. I mean, I, I answered it the same way. Um, they like, which one do you want back? I said none. And then what should they change? If they did it again. I said, they should change nothing. They should stay retired. I don't, don't ever want to see them ever again. And I, I mean, I also liked it too. Like I thought it was fun to have like an Avenger on the sideline, but it's very easily abusable, and I just don't care. I just don't care. Like, I hate ID cards now. Uh, number four, in Golden Age, which card should players play during a game? I mean, like, whatever you want. But also, like, you want to just, do you want to know, like, a Golden Age meta? The Majestics podcast is there if you want to listen to some Golden Age meta, like, call-in cards. I mean, Green Arrow with the Green Arrow ID card, Hawkeye with the Hawkeye ID card. Yeah, just play There's Quinjet. Dumb ones. Yeah, just play Quinjet. If you're going to play, like, ID cards and you're going to make that a main focus of your team, play, like, two, what is it? It's uh, two Ultron drones, the Quinjet, stuff like that. Yeah, like, uh, old Night Quinjet Hawk meta, Prime. like... Yeah, Nighthawk Prime. Old yeah. Quinjet meta used to like always call in the um, the Hawkeye that had two bolts and pen blast because you could double target and kill two Ultron Jones. But now that doesn't matter because there's like a thousand times better Hawkeye that can also kill two Ultron Jones fairly easily. So, yeah. Yup. Um, another Fun thing stuff. for Golden Age. So I would suggest if you don't play with IDs to do like one one of your like monthly like games, just like throw in a bunch of IDs, like tell everyone like it's going to be like an ID night and just like see it, how it like works and see, you know, make the decision for yourself. Um, so definitely play with them in golden age at some point. Uh, but also the animal and robot ATAs are real fun in golden age. Mm, yeah. All right. Number five, what changes over the years were good ideas and bad ideas dealing with cards in the game. You can include buy standard tokens and objects for this question. It's the only question he allows us to include buy standard tokens and objects, and I did not do it because I'm sorry I didn't have them. Uh, I still think uh, the worst decision they did was making how modern cards look. They look absolutely terrible. The only good thing about modern cards is that the info is all in the front. That is the only good thing, is that you don't have to flip to the back. Oh, but oh wait, yes you do, because you have to see the dial if you want to. So... I hate modern cards. They suck. That's the last time I'm going to say about that. Simeon, you can go ahead and answer this question. Uh, so I think one of the good ideas was that background thing. I I always think one of WizKids and like HeroClix is like strongest pulls is the characters they have access to and like the fans of those characters. So you know when 
when uh, What If set came out and you had like all these characters, but you had zero information on them. Like, sure, we have Google and I could go home and look up the uncommon Spider-Man and the uncommon Daredevil and like look at what storylines they're from. But man, if you had just included a little like background story, like the reason this Spider-Man's different is he comes from like Earth 61723. And like on that Earth, you know, this and this happened instead of this and this. That would have been cool. Uh, a bad idea, I think, is on the DC sets when they don't have bystander images. Like, why? Why even have a little slot for, like, the dial? Yeah. If you're not going to, like, just... For some reason, that's really popular with these. I don't know if they can't get, like, the rights to that image or what it is, but it's it's terrible. Yeah, I don't know if they just don't want them using, like, scans from their comics, but either way, yeah. it's silly and bad. With team-up cards coming up. Uh, what characters do you want to have team up cards in the future? So a lot of team up cards are really episode specific. Um, I don't have any from specific episodes. I just have characters that I think would be cool that I like that have team up. So first one, pretty simple, um, Captain America and Bucky, uh, and then slash Captain America with the invaders. I think that'd be a really fun team up card to play. Uh, the second one is a character who I often play this guy, not on a theme team, because he is on a ton of teams that don't get keywords because they existed for just this one issue or this one, you know, like quick six or seven issue run. And that's Howard the Duck. Uh, Howard the Duck was part of the, the Fearsome Four, the Ducky Dozen, you know, a couple of like really weird teams that he was with. I would love team up cards for those just because if they make the Ducky Dozen, I, I could like die and go to heaven. Like that's that is seriously like my dream in Heroclix for them to make the Ducky Dozen. Most of those figures, like, most of those characters were made up for that or reused and just died in that story. So, like, they're probably not going to get made. Uh, but Howard the Duck also with, like, uh, She-Hulk, Gwenpool, and Squirrel Girl team-up cards would be really awesome. Uh, so, yeah, that would be just the one character I, I would really absolutely want team-up cards for is Howard the Duck because he teams up with a lot of people. Uh, he's teamed up with Spider-Man. Who cares about Spider-Man? But, like, him and She-Hulk is, like, a great duo. Uh, him and Gwenpool were hilarious, and him and School Girl were great. So those would be, like, my go-to team-ups. Simeon. Speaking about caring about Spider-Man, uh, mm. who's on more mm. teams than Spider-Man? Literally, his team ability is the team player team ability. Like, uh, So, yeah, uh, I think Deadpool, uh, Spider-Man, Wolverine, anyone that, like, just gets co-opted to, like, so many teams that it doesn't make sense to like necessarily give Deadpool like uh yeah, like you know he's not necessarily on a team when he's teamed up with Spider-Man and Wolverine but you know maybe there was like a couple issues or like a a little event that happened um and like some of the smaller Marvel events they like split off into groups so if you're not going to focus on like a TV episode team ups like if it's not a animated set that we're doing then I could totally see doing like certain issues or certain runs. Like they could have like a Hickman team up where it's, you know, Spider-Man taking the place of Johnny storm from the fantastic four. That would be kind of cool. Actually, I could do that. Yeah. Anything that lets you like cheat keywords a little bit. Yeah, and like that's like my one problem with team up cards is that it has to be a theme team, and then you can't also play generics with it, or it's also, it also makes it Highlander basically. Yeah, you can't. That's, yeah, that's rough. Like I, I want there to be just a bonus for already having to play two of these specific people, just like how characters have like um, traits that it's like plus one attack when adjacent to whoever. Like why can't they just work like that? Why do they have to? ruin the rest of the fun when the first um, like thought was like oh what if i played like f like five of these hot girls each with a different like team up or all with the same team up and it's like oh can't do that no nope, can't have no sir you know number eight uh sorry excuse me Jeez, goodness gracious uh number seven what do you want whiz kids to do next that involves cards i said um uh put more team ups and boosters if you're gonna make so few Okay. Oh, sorry, not so few, but make literally so many. Uh, also, I said turn cards back to the way they used to be because the new card design sucks. Yeah, I said uh, I don't want them to do a whole lot with the cards because it is a miniatures game. So like, I'm not, I'm not here for the cards. At the end of the day, I'm here for the like the tiny sculpts and Absolutely. the dials. And if they do team up cards again, then release them in a more accessible way. Whether that's like literally. 
if they go to like foil packs, like collectible card games, or if yeah. they just put, you know, like, hey, congrats, you pulled Hot Girl. Here's five team up out of like five of like the eleven team ups or something. I don't know. It just seems silly to have only five team ups out of like almost two hundred. Yeah. And you only get five in a brick. Like I'm not gonna buy a multiple bricks for team up cards. That's not going to happen. Yeah. No, and that that bad. just means that most people will never collect them all, which is what they set to begin with. So I mean. <sighs> Are you happy? You, yes. you you achieved your dream. Are you are you glad? <laughs> uh, last question. If you can make any type of card, what would you make? What would it say? I would make a card. It would be the character Old Man Hawkeye from the Old Man Logan storyline. His card would have a trait that's called the longest road trip. Once per game, when a character with this, <laughs> with this trait is KO'd near your opponent's starting area, you skip your opponent's turn, or you get to take two turns back. However it went. Uh, you know, an ability that that old man Logan had from a set that's about to rotate that never could trigger because there's not another character in the game with the longest road trip trait. Could have just Ever. played two of those at 75 points. No, did it? Let me double check. Could I Could I actually have? No. I don't know. Right. Simeon, give us your answer for what card you want in the game. The what card I want to be made in the game is uh, I want a once per game card. This would be like a yellow or red card where you get to check the time left in the game. So like you just hold up like the yellow card and a judge walks over mm-hmm. and they're like, is uh, 7 minutes and 33, 34, 35, 36. I mean, they wouldn't count up, but, you know, you get the diff, the, the idea. And then uh, I would also like a, a a red card that you can hold up in the air at a venue, and the judge pauses your game. They pause the time for your game, and they say, like, hey, what's going on? And you're like, oh, I just need to take a bathroom break. And then you get up and you go to the bathroom. Or, you, awesome. or you're like, well, I don't believe what my opponent's saying. I don't want to, like, waste time but I want to like discuss why this ruling is happening. Um. <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. Uh, I didn't understand the longest road trip trait at all. <laughs> it totally works, but it still bothers me there isn't a Hawkeye. No, it's if still bad. Game, if a friendly character that can use this trait is KO'd in an opponent's starting area, you take an extra turn. Yeah. Uh, I honestly didn't know that. Uh, that still sucks. It's still a bad trait. Why they didn't give it to the spider wrong. buggy... Doesn't it make totally sense should have to been on the spider buggy too. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it, I thought it, I totally read it wrong. Like the first time I saw that, and I was like, "Well, that sucks. We need an old man hawk or someone else to make it." I'm sorry, guys. My uh, my ignorance is showing. That was three years ago. <laughs> I didn't know what I was talking about. Three or four years ago, whatever. Um, so, I do want uh, whatever the hero clicks equivalent of a draw four card would be. I want that something that would make my opponent just absolutely furious that I can play for no reason unprovoked. I do want That's a card. That uh, has like an effect upon force release. So like when you show them like this is my team, like before you even place figures on the map, like Ooh. you show them this is like your team, and you have a card mm. that like I don't care if the effect is like all all theme team bonuses are negated for like roll off, yeah. and you paid like ten points for it, like or this... <laughs> you know whatever. Um, Maybe it's just, like, choose one. It's, like, five points, and it's, like, choose one of your opponent's equipments and, like, KO it before game begins. Something like that. Or, like, remove an additional game element. I want I want a card that says, for this... I guess this would be just be, like, a battlefield condition, right? Mm-hmm. You would just, like, play this, and you'd be like, for this game, you cannot look at my cards. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. I'd pay 20 points but, for all right. that. I would absolutely pay 20 points for that. That's that'd be Stop a metal looking piece at my right dials. There. Stop looking at my dials. Mind your own business. All right, those are Malcolm's questions, and that brings us to the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to go ahead and say you can find Dial H for Hero Clicks on Facebook.com slash Dial H for Hero Clicks. Find us on Twitter at Dial H4. That's a number for Hero Clicks. Uh, if you want to send us an email or questions, kind of like how Malcolm sends us questions, you can do that either on messaging us for Facebook or Twitter, or you can send it to our Gmail account, which is Dial H4, F O R E, for Hero Clicks at Gmail.com. Check out our Patreon. We're doing a giveaway this month, uh, like we do every month. We're giving away a Robbie Reed in the H dial with the Dial H sticker, and then a Mara for second place uh, with the Dial H sticker. So anybody who gives at any like value at all will be entered in the giveaway, and then 
we also have a Discord server where I'm going to try to play some Bad Samaritan this week on the old Discord. Uh, so if you want to join us for that, you can do that there. We also discuss uh, team building, random stuff, just whatever. It's like a fun little Discord server. You can come in and hang out. Uh, if you want to support the show, that's absolutely something you can do. You can also find us on iTunes, Podbean, wherever podcasts are found, all that good stuff. Simeon, you want to go ahead and read us out of here? Yes, I do. So, with that, with the whole show all tidied up, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Don't know how that's going to work with the Lions shut down, but anyhow, check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. <laughs>